What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the College Loop Podcast, episode 62 of the College Loop Podcast, and another episode of Bruise Day with Brooks. Brooks, how you doing, buddy? Doing good. That was a good start. I like it. <laughs> yeah, kind of got a little, I got <laughs> clotheslined there, because I was like, three, two, oh, we're recording. All right, Tar, Daniel, how y'all two doing? First show back where all of us are here. So Tar, go first. Hey, man, it's a, it's always a great day to be on the loop and and good to be back with you guys. I'll be full disclosure. Dylan decided he didn't need to call me when, when they were doing uh, the college loop late at night. And I told him, just simply call and wake me up. I know it's my own fault. I'm the one that wanted to do college loop after dark. I fell asleep. You could have called me seven times. We could have resolved yeah, this. I'm, I will be I'm better. To, I'm committed I'm to go it. Get going receipts. Forward. I'm going to go get receipts. Don't pull up the receipts. Don't pull up the receipts. receipts. Don't need to bring up the receipts. <laughs> Daniel, how are we doing? Um, pretty good. Once again, it's good to be back. Sorry for my little hiatus there. Had to grind through finals week and then had a bunch of just random stuff going on that stopped me from being here, but we're back. Right. Uh, well, that we're, we're glad to have you back. Glad you put school first. That's, that's most important. Take care, take care of your academics. Take care of yourself. Before Dylan starts bringing up the receipts that are not important whatsoever. At 11.04. Yeah. And you're just going to have to do the show with Daniel. With just Daniel. You could have worked. And then he up. passed out. You could have woke yeah. me up. You, I, you left out the part where you texted me an hour later and asked if I was awake. Yeah, because I was trying to see if uh-huh. you were just ignoring my my All text. Right. This is this bull. This is pointless bullshit. Let's get to the question of the day because we had a really really good fan submission. And uh, let's see if our intern we have we have an intern today. Uh, at the beginning today, his name is Colin. Let's see if he can throw that up on the board for us. The question of the day. There we go, Colin. I can't see him. I don't know if you did that or not, uh, Dylan. I like, gave up my. No, uh, he he he. It was all it was all Colin. Colin. There we go. Colin's got an A, a plus so far. In That's his, right. In, he's he's, he's passing, passing the course so far. Question but, of the day, Dylan. Hit me with it. Shout out to at Gregorio Duran 3355 for our first official question of the day. And just to start the football conversation to get, let the intern know to let the to select that. Because, yeah, there, there we, we go. Oh, two for two? <laughs> Could a Hugh Freeze-led Auburn team be this year's LSU from last year in the West? Bro. Everybody? Me. Um, <laughs> I mean, no, that's great. Uh, that's the fun part is nobody can ever – nobody ever expects a team like that. Like, nobody saw LSU doing that last year, and it comes out of nowhere. And um, So, yeah, sure, why not? I, you know, anybody could be that. Texas A&M this year could be LSU from last year. Who knows? But I really like um, – no, I I say that I don't think so. I think <laughs> I think A and M is really in a tough spot right now. But um, yeah, that's the that's the super fun part about getting to be an Auburn football fan right now is we can predict whatever the heck we want and we can say yeah it can happen because who says it can't? You know, with Hugh coming in with all these transfers coming in, like why not? Let's shoot for the moon. Let's see what we can kind of get this year. And I like that. And we talked a little bit. I think it was last time about uh, our chances of kind of winning some of the big three games we have this year. And uh, I think we were all kind of in agreement that like the chances of beating Bama at home this year are higher than they have been in the past couple of years. And, um, you know, you get one of those big wins in there and yeah, all of a sudden it's a super exciting season right from the jump of the Hugh Freeze tenure. And then we're off and rolling. Well, I can already feel all the eyes turning to me because Brooks just said, I think we're all in agreement here um, because everyone that watched the show last week knows that I did not agree. Uh, so thank you for putting the ball on the tee for me there, Brooks. I'm actually going to throw this one to Daniel real quick and just kind of expand on it, Daniel, if that's okay. From a roster construction standpoint, if you, if you look at and, – and Brooks kind of covered the overarching theme here and, and, and brings up a good point – about the transfers in and and the work that Hugh Freeze and company have done, which I think everyone and their brother would agree. <laughs> brother Hugh, get it? Good, good little jokey joke there. Everyone and their brother would agree. This team has gotten better, but from a roster construction standpoint, do you believe this team could be the LSU uh, of, of last year uh, in, in the 2023 installment? Uh, I would love to say yes, but I, I just – I don't think so. Um LSU going into the 2022 season had just hired a great approved or let me, let me rephrase that. Brian Kelly going to LSU was in a lot better of a spot than Hugh Freeze is coming to Auburn. You sure. know, this is a guy who has two college football playoff experience or uh, appearances. Are we going to talk about how those games went? No, but they were there. Um, 
And, you know, he just was an effective recruiter at Notre Dame, which anyone who knows anything, it's hard to recruit at Notre Dame just because of the academic standards that – don't look at me like that. No, I'm, I'm going to look like at that. you like that. All right, there's your first one, intern. Hard, that hold one. on. Will you just, will you just <laughs> let me talk? Good Lord. <laughs> Harder because the academic standards you have to uphold. You don't have those at LSU. If you have a pulse, you can go to that school at LSU. No. So – Yes, that's literally you're right. You're, no, 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 no. Now, hold on, pause. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing that the academic rigor at Notre Dame is more challenging than Louisiana State University. Nobody on God's green earth is going to dispute that. Have you seen the thirty for thirty Catholics versus convicts? They go over this at Notre Dame. There are a certain academic standards that recruits have to meet that no other school in the Power Five, except yeah, no, I stand by that. Maybe Vanderbilt, but, but that's it. Don't have to meet. The, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets? We're not counting that. Purdue? We just the power five. This conversation. <laughs> uh, I changed my mind. SEC. <laughs> UCLA? Here we go. UCLA? <laughs> UCLA? I got into UCLA. Yeah, maybe you're smart. No, that's not true. We haven't explored that <laughs> offer. That we, now, now, the more I think about it, the more that, I, that your, your argument is starting to make some sense. But <laughs> Did I answer the question or not? I forgot. No, I think you did. I think that right, actually, cool. I, I, we, we kind of got off the rails there, but welcome to the loop. I, I, I think that actually, guys, I think that the Daniel does bring an interesting perspective here. I do think that Brian Kelly came in, was set up for more success at LSU than, than Hugh Freeze was in Auburn. Uh, and, and Dylan's giving me this the harshest side eye I've ever seen in my life. But granted, Hugh Freeze came in when there's an established NIL collective. That is a tremendous, tremendous upper hand. The roster construction at LSU was in this state far beyond what Auburn was at when, when Hugh Freeze took over. Let's, let's call a spade a spade, guys. This roster stunk. I mean, it was bad with a capital B. I, I think that you bring an interesting uh, a- angle to that point there, Daniel. And, and Dylan, I guess I'm, I'm going to throw this to you since you're giving me the, the stink eye, and for lack of a better term. Brooks, I'm coming back to you in a second, I promise. But – I'm, you're giving me the stink eye here, Dylan. Do you really think that Hugh Freeze was given the same opportunity that Brian Kelly was? So let's look at LSU from 2021, right? Oh, what is the What is the team that lost to or that that beat LSU at home in 2021 under a bad head coach and a slightly lesser talented LSU team than what we've seen? They lost to a Brian Harson led with a team with Bo Nix at quarterback. Now, wait a minute. They had an all-star linebacker in the reserves. He's in this freaking Zoom call. (laughs) There we go. This team also went six and seven and lost a bowl game and fired their head coach. And then they made a hire about with Brian Kelly. They went to the portal and they picked up a lot of big talent and a quarterback in Jane Daniels, who is going into 2023 as one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. And now I'll move over to Auburn. In 2022, Auburn had the same kind of downfall, maybe more so than LSU did, or uh, from the fall from grace. You had this coach that you were all hyped up for going into the next season. Orgeron got fired next year. Brian Harson gets fired. You pick up Hugh Freeze. You go to the portal. You get your quarterback. Pick up some starters. The the they're the, there. The parallels are there. Exactly. The parallels are there. And I still don't think the roster was in the same spot. Well, I mean, what do you mean by that? Explain explain that point further, and I'm going to go into why you might be wrong. I think over – you're going to go into why I, th- why I'm, I might be wrong anyways. I'm Daniel's been patiently raising his hand. Put a pin in my thought. We're coming back. I promise. Quite frankly, I promise. I was doing the – yeah, that whole procedure, so I had to make the joke. Daniel, you've been patiently there are waiting. Two things I'd like, there are two things I'd like to point out. That LSU team in 2021 did go toe-to-toe with Nick Saban and Brian Denny Stadium, and – Beat Texas A&M. A&M. <laughs> that was a good yeah. A&M year. That was sure. a very Maybe bad. <laughs> it's a really bad Alabama game too. Uh, <laughs> it just matter. saying. Just saying. Uh, if you want to go into that point, A&M gave Alabama fits last year, and I wouldn't say they're in a good spot. But they're going. Not. In, Going to that, I think the talent is there. If you look at the talent LSU was bringing back, they brought back their same DB core. Auburn to bring it back, probably a more talented DB core than LSU had uh, two years ago. 
Uh, and linebackers, I, I'm not going to get into linebackers uh, that much because linebackers are a bit of a train wreck right now. I would leave that one alone. That was that yeah, not, not, not going to help your conversation. Sorry, Brooks. Not at all. <laughs> uh, defensive lineman, you beefed it back up. You picked up SEC caliber talent. You picked up Big Ten caliber talent. Uh, and then you go to the offensive line. The offensive line is the best offensive line, hopefully, that we're going to we have seen since the 2017 year and maybe even before then. Uh, and you picked up a quarterback who – had a bit of a down year last year, but and when he was on, he was on, and he behind with Kenneth Walker's help, he led Michigan State to an eleven and two record, and beat the Pitt Panthers, the number twelve ranked Pitt Panthers with Kenny Pickett still in the game, and he picked up wide receivers. You have Nick Martiner, Camden Brown is there, and I gotta be honest, I, besides Blake Neighbors, Auburn might have the same kind of same talented wide receiver room that LSU had last year, outside of Blake Neighbors. I'm going to snag your your conversation here, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to Brooks for a second. Brooks, this is just me and you talking, so no one yells at me and tells me that I'm crazy. All right? Uh, unless, unless you decide to tell me I'm crazy, and then to hell with it, I give up. I need five that's bucks. Fine. And that's fine. Am I over the top crazy for, for, for thinking that LSU – I think there's a number of reasons to think that LSU in, in 2022, uh, or I guess 2020 – yeah, whatever. Um, what what uh, uh, the first year under Brian Kelly was in a better spot than than Hugh Freeze is here at Auburn for for namingly uh, I think still roster construction and retention of of, of talent and also Ed Orr's run not a great coach had a great group really had 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 a special team in 2019 and, and none of us are going to deny that he was not as atrociously bad as Brian Harson I'm sorry. Um, I, I know, I know you, you played under him. I'm, I'm really not trying to drag him, but uh, the, the, the number the numbers are there. Uh, do you am I am I just nuts for thinking that LSU probably had a better at least schematically roster construction than, than Auburn has right now, or are you kind of in the camp that you know Auburn maybe has enough parallels that this could work? Uh, I think before this whole portal situation opened up, like absolutely, they were set up way 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 better than we have been. Uh, I think targeting O linemen the way that we have just really, really helps us. But sure. yeah, you know, it's tough. And uh, I mean, shoot, I don't necessarily like him, but Brian Kelly is a really dang good football coach. And I think, and so him being able to come in, I think a lot of what we saw with him coming in, we would say, oh, well, the roster was schematically, you know, built for him to come in. Or uh, I think a lot of that you could attribute to him probably sure. uh it's him coming in and seeing his strengths and what he's got going um so it's just kind of hard to tell because that's what a good coach does is they come in and they figure out what they have and they really uh don't necessarily let people outside the program unless you're really good at watching football to really understand what their problems are and he's able to hide those pretty well i think that honestly was just a big part of it was he's able to come in and well we say schematically because probably he's he's the one that came in and set everything up the way that it was supposed to be set up. And he built that team around who he had. And I think that honestly pays, uh, plays a bigger part of it than maybe we didn't necessarily know because, I mean, yeah, dude, when com trying to compare talent and uh, roster spots the way that we have been, like it's, it's – you could easily draw some parallels. But, yeah, I think, I think the big difference there for this whole rambling answer would be I think a lot of it has to do with Brian Kelly coming in and building – the team around the roster that he had. I don't, I, I actually, I think first off there's diplomat Brooks. Well done. Uh, he, he's really <laughs> coming into his own in this, in this analyst role. I Dylan, I, I, I do want to pose a question for Brooks, but if you needed to expand on that thought, go ahead. I wanted to take this to a player. Uh, it's a waste to have a former player and athlete on our, on our show. If we're not going to ask yeah. him about an, an athlete question, if you wanted to expand on that point, go ahead. And then I'm going to, I'm going to grab I, I was just going to, I was going to give uh, our intern Colin uh, something to make a little quote graphic for. Because I found another, I found another parallel. In terms of immediate success, the transfer portal is more important than recruiting high schoolers. And in the 2022 transfer portal class, LSU finished or finished third in on the 24/7 recruiting uh, transfer portal. In 2023, Auburn currently ranks third in the transfer portal rankings. Just Don't parallels. Point out stops. Yeah, I, look, I, I I see the parallel. <laughs> Someone's got to play devil's advocate, and and yeah. and 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 I think Daniel and I actually complimented nicely there on, on playing the devil's advocate role here. I'm not sold. I'm kind of with you, Daniel. I want I want to bring this kind of to a player um, perspective here, Brooks. And I, I know this is like not necessarily the overarching theme, and doesn't 
is not the exact question that's been posed for the question of the day. But you played for a handful of teams with a handful of different out, outlooks of, of, of expectations, uh, you, whether that be under Coach Malzahn or, or under under uh, head coach Brian Harson. How much how, how difficult is it as a player? You're hearing, especially going into year one of a head coach, something you experienced in, in the coaching change, hearing all this outside noise and understanding at the end of the day, you all are there to, to win a championship. That every, every athlete's goal is to win a championship. How difficult is it to kind of block out all this noise for people like annoying three annoying dudes that have a podcast called The College Loop that are debating whether or not your team is capable? And, and, and how do you find that balance of using it as fuel but also not over uh, oversaturating your mind to the point where it's all you think about? Um, yeah, uh, it's, 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 um, when you're on the part of the team, when you're there and things are working out and you have the new coach and it really is, um, it kind of just becomes a block out everything around you, pay attention to what you can control, uh, because there's a lot of different people that have different opinions. And, you know, there are a lot of people that right when coach Harson showed up, didn't like him, didn't like the way that we thought things were going, but you can't have that attitude as a player. Like we all had to sit there and no matter what other people were saying, we had to be like, all right, screw it. You know, this is, this is the team that we are on. And like people like me, this is my last year playing football. So I'm going to make the most out of it. We're going to see what all we can do. And it would be really, really fun. if We could prove these people wrong. And so, yeah, there's something to be said just for kind of, um, yeah, blocking out what other people may say or just, not listening to the hype either because you're the ones that are there. You're the ones that are seeing how um, you're implementing what he, what the coach wants you to do and really how he's meshing with everybody. So um, there's a lot of that, that is maybe just kind of unspoken that maybe nobody really talks about, but you kind of feel it. You can't really put it into words, but it is, it's super, it's, uh, it's just weird trying to go into it. And then nobody really knows how it's going to play out until the season starts. And then, you hit some adversity after a few games and all of a sudden, you know, maybe hit your stride, maybe the wheels fall off. Yeah. And, and certainly your one under Brian Harson was the, I guess the ultimate example of, of when the wheels fall off, the wheels fall off because there was a high at one point where the, that team, your, your, your senior year, I mean, there was a clear path that Auburn can make college football playoff. There was a, a genuine path for Auburn to make the college football playoff. And, and then you guys experienced the whole, uh, you know, you had a rough plague by injuries. It, there are a number of things you could point at, whether you want to start with schematics or, or, or whether you want to point toward injuries. Um, losing Bo Nix certainly doesn't help, right? <laughs> and, 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 and a lot of a lot of different things in that. I was just, I, I guess, more than just the show, I was personally curious because I would, I would imagine there does come a point where right now all we can do is talk about the what ifs and, and the what we think. So we don't really have any concrete evidence of how Hugh Freeze is going to, going to go about things on the football field, not in the locker room, not in the media, not on the recruiting trail. We don't know how he's going to go about things on the field of play yet. So it's all its all really up to speculation. And I know that that's a lazy way to say, well, I don't really know. But <laughs> I, I do think that this is good fodder because it's very interesting. And, and this is certainly a different outlook, fellas, than the first year of Brian Harson. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to be honest. This It feels different. And, and I'm not dogging uh, on a guy you played for, really. I try not to do two Brooks, even though I've definitely dragged his name through the mud a few times. But it's a different atmosphere. There's a guy that has had SEC success and a guy that has, buzzword, beaten Alabama uh, on, on, on more than one occasion. And, uh, I, yes, and back-to-back -back seasons, actually, Dylan. And uh, just to expand on your point, not that you didn't know that. I'm not <laughs> – even going to go down that alley. It was just an Easter egg for them. Yeah, it was, it was an Easter egg. But uh, <laughs> I, I do certainly think it's interesting. And uh, Brooks, I, I I hope you don't mind those questions because you you're definitely going to be a good source for us to talk about. Okay, so this has happened inside the locker room under a coaching change. Hey, Brooks, you ever see that? <laughs> and uh, you're you're probably one of the best. Really, you're one of the best guys to ask. Uh, so we appreciate you coming on. I think that's all I've got uh, right now, Dylan uh, Daniel. If you guys have any other burning questions, concerns, strongly held beliefs, demands. We good? Uh, I'll just point out, uh, I saw a lot of comments in the last episode. We are not counting out Robbie Ashford. We are just going off the fact that they are recruiting a starting quarterback. <laughs> and we're just okay. assuming, based on that point, that Peyton Thorne is starting over Robbie Ashford. That's just, um, I'm, I'm just going to address all those comments we got in the last episode. Excuse me. Um, I'll address them, too, while I'm here, guys. Uh, Dylan's not counting out Robbie Ashford. I am. 
Um, so, Brooks, always a pleasure to have you on, my man. It is always a ton of fun talking ball with you. Analyst, Brooks Walton. Tell all the people where they can come hang out with you on socials. And uh, hopefully we'll see you same place, same time next week. I'm putting you on the spot. Hope so. Yep, I'll be here. You already know. Love to see it. All right, Brooks, let, let everybody know where they can hang out with you, and we will see you soon. Yep, thanks, guys. Uh, yeah, just Brooks Walton on Instagram. Appreciate it. Um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks. Hey, Brooks Walton, everybody. Yes, big thank you to Brooks Walton. Always a great time on Bruce Days with Brooks. Dude has so much insight. Uh, analyst, known football analyst, Brooks Walton, and his retirement from football playing. Unless you're an NFL team in need of a linebacker, we know a guy. We, we yeah. know a guy. We also know a holder. So I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. We've uh, and, and, and by the way, we haven't talked about this enough, but I was talking to our new intern, Colin, that we were mentioning, and I'm going to pull on the show here in just a minute. Um, and uh, I was mentioning earlier, we have two now – NFL players that have been on the show. It's kind of cool. Owen Papo and Honor okay. Yeah. So that's like a, a little bit of a slight flex to close our football uh, segment. And a third soon to be all pro as soon as someone realizes what Brooks brings to the table. And um, as soon as as soon as that happens, we'll let you know. Get, get him in the Pro Bowl. Yeah. When he gets picked up, we're we're now LBU, right? Like 100%. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Like 100% turnover rate. Like all the mm-hmm. linebackers that show up go to the NFL. That's it, correct. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and I mean, for, if you're listening and you're a USFL GM or an XFL GM, we can start there. He just needs a shot. Like, that's all we need. Oh, yeah. We, we can, he we can he looked great in the Stallions jersey. I can't <laughs> I'd, I'd, get a, I'd buy a Brooks Walton Stallions uh, I, jersey in a heartbeat. The quickest purchase of my life would be a Brooks <laughs> Walton uh, Stallions jersey. All right. Let's talk hardwood hoops. And let's go over and talk about Janai Broom. Well done, Colin. Well done. And we'll talk about Janai Broom. And he's been turning heads, guys. Uh, he did not make the short list um, for the uh, NBA projected uh, selections, but he has been tearing it up at the G League Elite Camp. Um, he dropped, had two games this past weekend, dropped 17 points, eight rebounds, two assists, and one in the first, uh, second game of the day, rather, excuse me, and uh, scored 23 uh, points, four rebounds, um, recorded a, a, one assist, one steal, and one block in the first. Guys, Janai Broom stock trending uh daniel how does he fit into an nba scheme is he an nba ready player right now well um as cam newton once said there ain't 32 better than me uh i'm just kidding uh uh, this is hard he has the frame sure and i think he has the athleticism but the actual you know like dribble 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 shoot i that (laughs) that part i don't know about uh, at this point, that's that hard hitting journalism so, you're going to school for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, for. I think I, <laughs> I need another year. Uh, wait, does he still have college eligibility? Oh, I can't say that word. Yes. Does he still oh, yeah. have eligibility? Years. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just want to make got, sure he didn't blow it. By. Years, and he's he's maintained his eligibility in, in his declaration. Okay. So I, I just want to make sure he didn't like lose that when he played in this tournament. But no. Okay. No. I, I think he needs to come back and play some college basketball. Um, I don't think he's ready. A hundred percent. Hey, Dylan, thoughts. Bruce Pearl's comments about Janai Broom this week, all very positive. He, he wants his guys to go to the league more than anyone. Trust me. It's a great recruiting tool. But his comments basically saying, we want him to tear it up and turn heads, but then we want him to come back to Auburn. Funny, right? Like, very funny. Uh, yes, very funny, very <laughs> truthful. For the love of God, Janai Broom, quit playing good in this tournament. <laughs> <laughs> I, we need you back on this team <laughs> because right now – Oof, because you missed out on Matthew Cleveland. Tyron Lawrence has taken his sweet time to decide if he wants to come to the Plains or not. Have not heard word of J. Will. Uh, He's been kind of quiet since he didn't make the short list. But My understanding is that Jalen Williams, uh, this is the impression. I have no evidence, no background for those of you listening that may or may not work for Auburn Athletics. I have no reason to believe this, but I have no reason to not believe that he will not be back in Auburn this fall. All right, so hallelujah to that. Uh, <laughs> build the statue for J. Will when he comes back. Sure. Uh, but look at it from that. Uh, you also got I, – I, was Julian Phillips involved in this tournament too? I, I vaguely remember seeing his name. But I don't know if there's like another Julian Phillips. Uh, you spelled Colin's name wrong for one thing. It's 1L. Uh, there you go. It's like, it's like Philip Montgomery. It's got 1L. 1L. Colin has 1L. But yeah, uh, looking at it like that, uh, Janai Broom is a vital part to this Auburn team next year being, you know, uh, fun to watch. Sure, 100%. <laughs> enjoyable, enjoyable to watch because if if you if Janai Broom leaves, 
uh, you're left with a, in a really bad spot at that five position because you're either going to pick up whatever scraps remain of any center in the transfer portal. Uh, there might be some good ones out there, but I haven't looked in, that far into it. Or you are you have a gun to your head and you're forced to put Dylan Cardwell in with starting minutes. And I, I think I speak for some people on this podcast that so you don't want that. <laughs> well, look, look, I, I don't, I don't think that starting Dylan Cardwell at the five is a recipe for success. But before we, before we continue on that tangent, I do want to invite Colin onto the show. Let's see if Colin can put himself on the show while I'm while I'm <laughs> rambling here because I do have a question for him. I do want him. To, to have the opportunity we're all about learning and growing here here's colin yeah i can put myself on there you go there you go colin welcome on to your first appearance at the college loop we're excited to have you thank you thank you it's good to be here i got a, i got a hoops question for you real quick I'm about okay to, um and i'm just gonna kind of let you piggyback off the rest of us janai broom is or is not ready to play nba basketball i i think i kind of want to start with daniel here i might put it a little differently than he did but I just think he needs to develop more of more skills. Right now, I think his what does that say? Colin has right now. I think that his free. his bag. He doesn't have he doesn't have the bag the NBA bag right now. He's <laughs> he needs one or two more things to put in that bag before I I declare him NBA ready. Okay, so um, we're now starting the Colin Byersdorf bag list of guys that are in their bag. <laughs> okay, um, congratulations. This is part of your intern job now. Um, after we, after we banish you back to the depths of who knows where the hell you go, um, I don't I don't I don't, I don't know the, the dark dark web probably. Um, yeah. But <laughs> after we banish you, I want you to uh, each each show. I need you to come up with an Auburn athlete that's in or not in their bag. Okay. And it can be at any level, any context. I mean, Charles Barkley says something great, like hilarious on TNT in his bag. He's in his bag. He's he's in his bag. Oh, yeah, Chuck exactly. Chuck's in yeah. his bag. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right. So. So uh, Bagman Byersdorf is going to take care of you guys uh, coming down the stretch. So official hard-hitting analytics about Janai Broom's preparation for the NBA draft. He's, quote, he doesn't have the bag yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. But he can develop the bag if he comes back. Yeah. He's, right. He needs another year to get the, get the bag filled. <laughs> He's got to fill the bag. I love this so much. Uh, yeah, this is one of the better bits. This is on the fly off the rip. All right, um, so thank people you that. that we know outside of, of the show who can make jingles, like a uh, good music, uh, I need a jingle for In His Bag with Byersdorf, <laughs> and he'll get his own segment of the show. This is off we're, the fly. We're actually, we're going to banish ourselves and pull all me, Daniel, and Dylan off the show. It's just going to be Colin for like two minutes explaining why an Auburn athlete's in their bag. Yeah, I'll take over. Yeah, you, Back. yeah. The, well, to hell with it. We're losing the show now, Dylan. I mean, this, we're screwed. <laughs> this is this is going to be great on TikTok. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be awesome. Colin, thank you for your feedback. Goodbye. No problem. I'm banishing the intern. Goodbye. All right. <laughs> As we continue down the stretch, I'm, I'm going to circle back real quick, Dylan, and then we're going to we're going to keep moving along. Um, and and Daniel, please feel free to jump in here. I don't think that to your Dylan Cardwell point, um, I don't think that it loses you a ton of games in terms of. It, it, I don't think it cost you what your minimum threshold of what I think is probably – I think your, your yeah. floor right now is like 23 games in the regular season. I think that's your floor right now. I don't think you win less, fewer than 23 games with Dylan Carball at center. I don't think that you win those toss-ups. Daniel, am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Um, this guy, his biggest asset has been being a hype man and blocking shots. Um, that's valuable. You need that guy. You need the glue sure. guy. Glue guy. Sure. Beyond that, oh, okay. The glue guy is not the guy that wins you those toss up games. Sure. Absolutely. Um, unless your glue guy happens to be Cam Newton on a 2015 Panthers, then that guy's win winning the games. Uh, however, that's not what this is. Um, so I just, I don't really think that uh, Dylan Cardwell starting at the five spot is a recipe for success if this Auburn team wants to make a run. All that to say, it really, really and truly, I, I think that the, the, this is all the overarching theme here is that it's in the best interest of both parties, in my opinion, that Jai Broom returns uh, for one more year of college basketball because apparently he's got to develop his bag or whatever the hell that means. <laughs> um, so we will uh, – we will. Hey, Dylan, go ahead. Let's beg the question. If Jai Broom were to move on to the NBA – With his bag. With his bag. It's not full, apparently. And we talked about the roster before, and I'm going to add Dylan Carbo into the mix. What is the over-under – Wit and wins for a team consistent of Aiden Holloway, Denver Jones, Jay Will, potential Julian Phillips, 
and Dylan Cardwell starting at the five. What what is the threshold there? Twenty four and a half. Twenty four and a half. I like twenty four and a half. I mean, I I'm I'm Julian Phillips is a kind of a difference maker for me. True. Uh, true. I, I I know that you need the big man, but I mean, scoring wise and shooting, I, I I think he's a difference maker. He's kind of an X factor guy. And the bench would still be pretty good with Trey <laughs> yes. Dawson, a hypothetical Tyron Lawrence, Cheney Johnson, Katie Johnson, Leor Berman, and Simo. But then again, you don't really have anybody who can really come in and play that five. Uh, Joan Phillips, maybe play a stretch. To, yeah, stretch four. To give Cardwell a break. I don't know. But maybe know, you'd, be, uh, you'd probably be pushing him at the stretch five to start. Stretch four yeah. to start. Yeah, you probably, I don't know. I, I'm not entirely sure how that shakes out. I'm not really w- w- ready to speak on that point yet um, without not without knowing concrete that the, uh, the we will not see Janai Broom in an Auburn jersey. Someone we won't see in an Auburn jersey. Let's talk women's hoops for just a second here. It is official now. We've uh, Dylan mentioned this earlier today that I'm, I'm slower than, than than Christmas. Yeah, he is. But yeah, okay. Well, it's official. Aisha Coolabali <laughs> is heading to Texas A&M. She made it official on all of her socials today. Uh, it's been pretty publicly announced. And now that you mentioned, when you mentioned that this has been out for weeks, I looked back um, in my notes, Dylan, and I literally had this from three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm just slower than Christmas, and I, we just hadn't mentioned it on the show. So I thought it was worth mentioning. Interesting, Daniel, that she's staying within the conference. Equally as interesting that I mean, AM not a terrible team. I think it's kind of a lateral move, right? Um, yeah, I would say so because Auburn as a program has been trending in the right direction significantly. For, yeah, since um, Coach Jay was hired, um, it's gotten. I mean, I know it's only two seasons, but each one's been better than the previous. Sure. Um, you know, this year you postseason play. Um, it's nothing to scoff at at all. Um, Texas A and M, on the other hand, just still have further to go. Um, to the point of her staying in the conference, Aisha Kulabali is an SEC basketball player. Sure. Um, she's Absolutely. proven that time and time again. However, I mean, if she goes to Texas A and M, obviously. Don Staley didn't really reach pick out up the phone on that one. Um, you know, who's the Tennessee coach? Thank you for putting me on the spot. I was thinking, I was about to go the Kim, the Kim Mulkey route at LSU, did, who also clearly didn't pick up the phone. Right. Um, so the three top programs did not show interest. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of talk that her and Coach Jay just didn't click. Um, she got a lot of minutes for someone who doesn't click with the coach, which I feel like just shows how talented she is that sure. even though her and Coach Jay didn't get along, Coach Jay couldn't justify keeping her off the floor. Sure. So I feel like her going to Texas A&M, this is one of those things where she goes and tells the head coach at Texas A&M, who I'm sure is just wonderful at their job, even though I don't know the name, um, and says, hey, build this thing around me. Let's run it for a year and just see what happens. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you, um, Daniel, about about the move. Um, but uh, I, I'm just – it's it's Gary Blair, by the way, uh, head coach at, at at A&M. But it was odd to me, guys. The And we're talking about this a little longer than I meant to. But just – I felt like there's a spot for her at an LSU or a Tennessee. And maybe not at a South Carolina because, I, look, guys, I, I know they're not the national – I know LSU is the reigning national champions. South Carolina is still in a league of its own right now. Let's not forget that. I mean, LSU's knocking on the door, Dylan. I'm, I'm with you. But – and the rich got richer this offseason. <laughs> LSU might have broke the door down. I don't think there's a knocking still, at the door. Still, I, I would think that there are role minutes, significant role minutes that could still get you placed in the WNBA <laughs> at at your South Carolina's, your, your LSU. And I certainly think that t- Tennessee, who had a down year, would be looking for some transfer portal help curious as to if it's mutual interest maybe schematics don't work maybe an attitude problem i mean i'm just it's something to watch it's a storyline right it's something to to look out for word gets out sec coaches know each other they talk a lot and coach jay's not new in the conference so something to to, to keep your eye on and, and i'm sure aisha kula Bali will be a double double machine at AM. i mean it's what she does She's a very talented basketball player, and she'll probably come and drop 20 on Auburn. Uh, that will probably happen. Um, but very interesting to see how that recruiting process went. 
continuing down the road, unless you guys have anything to add on, on or expand to that to that effect. Let's talk baseball for a second, guys. And and we've got beef with softball um, in, in a minute, but we'll, we'll we'll start with with baseball. I was not on the Sunday show, so I did not get to shout out Auburn for absolutely beating the ever living shit out of Ole Miss this weekend. Um, yeah, that's a fact, guys. That, that's actually I think that is the scientific term for what Auburn did to Ole Miss this past weekend. And the bats are hot at the right time. What's that? Four or five straight SEC series? I think it's four. Four. four? Two over the one and two, one and three, depending on the poll te- teams in the country. One over, I know they're down, but the reigning national champions at home. It's never easy to win an SEC series on, SEC series on the road. The pieces are coming together, fellas. And Auburn, I mean, it's 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 down to just one one SEC uh, opponent remaining. Correct, Missouri. Yeah. Th- that's off the dome. I, I my schedule yeah. accidentally I accidentally closed the tab. I, it's a, Missouri ends the season. It's three three Regular related season. games with, with Missouri. And, and correct me, Dylan. Like I said, I accidentally closed the tab, and I don't want to like type type while I'm trying to talk here. SEC win total should be up to twelve. Thirteen. Uh, I. I I think Auburn is now has a winning record in the, within the do. conference. Yeah, yeah. But I'm blanking right now. I 16 came I to mind, but I don't think it's 16. It's that I think 14, 15 and 14 is my guess. 14 or 15. 14 and 13. 14 and okay. 13. Okay, so you win one of the Missouri games and you're guaranteed a 500 record in the SEC. You win two of the Missouri games and then you're guaranteed a winning record in the SEC. Fellas, this coming down the stretch has been a tremendous success. I don't. I don't know another, a better way to put it, Daniel. On a scale from one to ten, how impressed have you been with Butch Thompson's squad in the past five weeks, four weeks? Um, hmm. we're gonna go nine point four. That's fair as hell. Um, you know, there's always room for improvement. I don't give out tens. I, I just really don't, unless you're Taylor Swift like that. That's the only person I give tens to. Um, everyone else, there's room for improvement. Bonk. So <laughs> they, they've done some really, really good things. Um, however, they're just like closing out games. The second game against Ole Miss, they played around in the ninth inning, and it just took longer than it should. That's nice and cute when it's the Ole Miss Rebels who are having an insane down year. Atrociously bad. You can't do that to LSU, or LSU will take that and run with it. You can't do that against South Carolina. And in the um, NCAA tournament, you, you, there are a lot of teams you just can't do that against. So I need to see that improve. Auburn's going to mess around and wind up being a two-seed uh, in, in, sure. in a regional, which is, which is great if they can close out this, this weekend. Dylan, I was looking at the numbers earlier today, actually, and, and this is something that really impressed me. After this past weekend, and, and I haven't I haven't really looked at cumulative team stats from an ERA standpoint uh, in, in a couple of weeks. This number's not good. I get it. It's not great. But Auburn having that ERA down to a collaborative 601 is incredibly impressive. Oh, for sure. They've dropped a and a half off their ERA in the past three weeks. Which is uh, what the hell amazing uh, uh, truthfully and 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 what's 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 mind-boggling and in auburn fans i'm sorry i'll go ahead and say the sell your soul for a friday night win song say it a couple times this week so you can go and get that good mojo put out there into the sec verse but auburn has had good outing after good outing after good outing from this pitching staff have they gotten knocked around a little bit sure but their guys are learning, and this was a this was a key word when we had Greg Olson come on the show. They're learning how to get hit in the SEC. They're learning how to trust the guys behind them. Are you going to have some guys, your Enrique Sanfields in your left field, that are going to make some piss poor reads? Sure. Young guys, sure. You're going to have some guys bobble the ball. It is part of the game. This group is learning how to get hit, and they're learning how to. Well, first off, the starting rotation is actually starting to look like. We've got a we've got a plan. Auburn has a plan, and they're able to go four or five innings. That's way better than, than getting out there. And your only guy that could go four plus was Tommy Vale. Now you're having guys go out there that aren't just three inning placeholders, and you're not playing a, a five you know five pitcher bullpen game. The pieces are seemingly falling into place, and I can't reiterate this enough, Dylan. And and I'm I'm going to kind of put the ball in the metaphorical tee for you for you to knock this one out of the park. But how important is it 
that 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 Auburn baseball is in the mindset right now. And Butch Thompson teams are really good at this. They're really good at this. To hell with the rest with the with the beginning of the season. This is where we're at right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At this point, you just throw it out. Uh, but just Butch Thompson needs to give me a pep talk. Just any point, like yeah. Whenever I take finals, when I start my NBA, I need him. Like when 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 in like a ninety six to pass a class, like I I need Butch Thompson in my ear. (laughs) And I also just want to point out, shout out to people who don't know what power rankings are. I'm looking at you, a very huge Twitter page that ranked Auburn ninth in their SEC baseball power rankings. Bullshit. You know who you are. Uh, you watch the show. I know you do with your four hundred thousand Twitter followers. You know who you are. But there ain't no way Auburn's the ninth in power rankings too. But yeah, it's huge what he what has happened to Auburn in the past four weeks. You go to Mississippi State, take down. I mean, I don't want to say they're very good this year, but a team that has won a national championship in the past two years. Uh, then you go to Ellis, you go to South Carolina, and you take down the number two team. You come home, the Eagle flew good, and you took down LSU. Eagle flew very good. And then it was it in, it was in Oxford, correct? It was it was in the town over there in Mississippi. This past weekend, yeah, yeah, it was a road game, road series. Yeah, yeah. So you went to Mississippi, uh, and you swept Ole Miss, thirty outscored them thirty seven to eleven. And now you look at Missouri, who is also one of the closer to the bottom teams in the SEC. Not a team you should sleep on on the side of still, because the SEC is very loaded at baseball. Correct. Auburn is the hottest team in the SEC, and probably, arguably, the hottest team in the country. The, there is one, very close there, to there, there's one, there, I'll put a little asterisk. I will, I will accept one other answer. Not a lot of people playing baseball as well as those damn volunteers right now. Tennessee is knocking the cover off the ball, and that pitching rotation's figured it out. But I don't know how you can tell me in good conscience that Auburn's not in the top at least six for power rankings. I mean, I can still understand. I think LSU is still the clear best team in the country, folks. You, you, made a re, you made a read of the power rankings? Sure. They're bad. Right. They're really bad. Arky one. Florida We're, two. We looked at different ones. I had Florida. I I'm, had looking, little... I'm looking at Saturday down south. Yeah, they yes. republished. Uh, was that today? Uh. Yes, I thought uh, they republished. So yesterday, I thought they republished today and have Florida at one. But continue. Either way, Florida yeah. and Arky. Well, I have in my comments underneath it. Uh, but LSU at three, Vandy four, Tennessee five, South Carolina at six, Kentucky at seven, Bama That's at eight, last week. Auburn at nine, A and M ten, Mizzou eleven, State twelve, Georgia thirteen, and Ole Miss That's at 14. fourteen. Daniel, I don't think we're we're overreacting here. Uh, I, I I think that I, I actually think your top five is fine. I I I, I still think LSU is the best team in the country. I'm sorry, folks. It's I I don't foresee them losing early in the tournament whatsoever. But there are not seven teams better than Auburn, Kentucky, and Alabama. Sure as hell don't belong on that list. No. I'll listen to argument for the other five. I will. I'll listen. But all that to say. Um, that might be uh, what you folks are listening at home. Um, make sure you drop in the comments, like, subscribe, and ring the bell, and, and let us know where you would power rank Auburn baseball right now because I don't think that it would be as low as most people. Uh, our audience seems is typically pretty high on Auburn. Can't figure out why, man. <laughs> but but uh, it's certainly interested to get your take. There is a large matter that's probably going to get this show more pissed off than you've seen it in a long time. So, Colin, you can go and flip it down to softball. I'm going to take a deep breath. <laughs> inhale exhale i'm gonna lead in Dawn, and and then i'm gonna turn turn you and daniel loose because i'm gonna need a second to compose myself after i introduce this um this com- conversation in the ncaa softball tournament there are i believe yep there are 16 host regions of 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 you know, the four pods very 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 similar to ncaa men's baseball uh, seeding formatting of those 16 seeds, there are always a slew of, of SEC teams that, that wind up hosting. This year, your teams that wind up hosting a regional are a four seed Tennessee, five seed Alabama, 10 seed LSU, 11 seed Arkansas, 14 seed Georgia, and then uh, that's the end, end of list for the SEC. So here's the fun thing about that. <laughs> 
Auburn softball, after we talked all year, and, and this is not me being pissed off about being wrong. This is not – I could give a rat's – I'm wrong all the time. Ask my girlfriend. She knows. I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> According to her, I'm never right. I love you, dear, if you're listening. You're not, but if you were. She's right. <laughs> Auburn softball is confidently, unequivocally better than half of this damn field. And it's not really a question. I'm not entirely sure how someone can look me dead in the eye and say, okay, so we're, here's, the, here's the teams we're going to send, list off these SEC teams, and have Tennessee and Alabama. But you don't put Auburn in. Auburn, head-to-head -head over Alabama. Pretty impressive series on the road. Did it take them three games to do it? Sure, who gives a shit? When, when, if, if you're that much better, win your games. You cannot put this in a way that I will ever understand how this team got overlooked after being criminally, and I mean criminally, underrated all year. All Matty Pinza has done with the exception of one game all year has gone out and shoved. She had her worst game of her uh, of probably her career in, 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 in their first appearance of the SEC tournament, and they still won. Top to bottom, this team has been, I, I get it, hot and cold, but they have been super solid offensively. On a year that Brie Ellis is having her sophomore slump because people know how to pitch to her now. And, and by the way, that'll get fixed. Wait till the postseason when she's pissed. Congrats. You brought this on yourself. <laughs> and you've got a pitching rotation of, of, of Maddie Penta and then Shelby Lowe who came in and shoved, shoved, regardless of that, of, of that game against South Carolina. Someone explain to me how on God's green earth Auburn softball is not hosting a regional. Dylan, take a stab at it. I have no idea. And you talk about the Bama series. Who was the pitcher that Alabama started for both the games Auburn won? Was it Montana Fouts? Yes. I believe that's correct. One of the premier uh, so, pitchers in college softball. Yeah, and probably not, not first in the SEC. Second or third, because the first spot is reserved for a certain – one in navy and orange but I, I don't understand it and before i get all bit out of shape just gonna go ahead and tell everybody auburn's going to clemson if we can if you can make it pack that house you need we need the sh auburn fans need to show the ncaa that this was not right nothing about this should have happened and they're going to play cal state fullerton who is going to be at the wrath of an angry auburn team that is in desperate need of being the villain of the tournament but I look at I just look I, I just don't get it. Auburn has been one of the top teams in the SEC all year, and you have you you have to go against Donnie Goborn, who is who is pissed off that game about something because she went out against Auburn in the SEC tournament and absolutely went off. And you look at that team and you're like, oh, this team doesn't deserve a regional. Let's give it to the team that lost to this team. I just don't get it. It makes no sense. I, I I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know who decided it. I don't know if it was a coin flip, and they decided, all right, who, which fan base should we annoy today? And they chose Auburn. And it makes it sound like Auburn's in the blunt and the stick for it for this because Auburn should be hosting a regional. I'd argue that this Auburn team should be in contention to be hosting the super regional. It just it it just makes no sense whatsoever that you sat there and watched the team get hot at the end of the season. They started off rough. If you want to base off the beginning of the season, sure, they shouldn't host a regional when the season started. Cool. But then as the season went along, they became one of the best teams in the sport, in softball, in the SEC in general. I don't know what you go through to get – how many SEC teams have are, are hosting? Is it six? Did you say six or did you say five? So we've got five. Georgia's hosting, which is bull. Uh, Arkansas hosting – Alabama hosting, LSU hosting, and Tennessee hosting. I didn't even count that, but you there's your there's your list. That's five. That that it, it makes no sense. And, and I'm pretty sure Auburn finished what third in the SEC? In the regular Not season, yet. yeah. In the regular season. And then they finished fourth in the tournament. And they're not hosting. Here's a little callback to the earlier in the show, Daniel. You said this earlier. You're talking about Cam Newton saying there's not 32 better. Are there 16 teams better than Auburn? 
Um, no, and I was kind of hoping you would just ask me my thoughts on the whole situation. So could you do that real quick, please? Yeah, actually, let me re- reboot. <laughs> put, in, put in reverse. Throw in reverse, Terry. Hey, Daniel, are you as hot as we are? Because I think you might be. I can't read that. That's it's, an angry Patrick. It's um, Patrick. That's Patrick <laughs> booing whenever uh, SpongeBob was trying to hide. Uh, <laughs> verbal meme, verbal meme. What is it? What was he trying to? He's trying to hide something from Mr. Krabs. Uh, Lord, what was it? Um, <laughs> no, it was when he was hanging on the wall in front of Mr. Krabs. Oh, for the dollar. dollar. Was the like dollar, yeah. Out. Great episode, by the yeah. way. S tier episode. Um, Not S tier, yeah, So, yeah. Um, it, it, it's bad. This is bad. Um, I don't really have the ability to formulate a whole thought on it, but I just can't wait to see what Matty Pinta and Brie Ellis and Denver Bryant and Nelia Peralta and Shelby Lowe and Annabelle Weidra and um, everyone do in Clemson. Look, I'm not saying Clemson's not a great softball program, and, and, and I don't want anybody to think that. Clemson has been – one of the one of the benchmark standards for the past half decade, really past decade, of what college softball should look like. And, and I don't want people to think that I'm saying that Clemson's not deserving. I'm saying there's a couple teams within this own freaking conference that are not more deserving than the Auburn Tigers. And I can say that beyond a shadow of a freaking doubt. I am personally mind blown. And, 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 I, and I think Daniel put, put it the best way. It's hard to formulate words, and 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 for those of you who were gonna kind of be a little con- confused that I'm I'm this worked up because I'm usually the most I feel like devil's advocate here, most neutral and and, and show the least bias. Guys, this is a big slap in the face to, to this this group of girls that have busted their ass all season. They and they have been resilient, and they have battled through injuries. They have worked through their uh, as we mentioned a minute ago, their best power hitter. Not not having her stuff that she had last year. And Bree is still an absolute weapon. Don't move her in the lineup. Mickey gets that. I am absolutely befuddled. I should use the word befuddled. Until next thing you know, I'm going to use the word penultimate. You never know. But I'm absolutely mind boggled by how the NCAA did this in good conscience. All that to say, Daniel, tell everybody where they can find you, love you, and support you. You can get at me on Twitter. At, uh, yeah at Daniel J. Locke. Um, you can read my written work at Auburn Wire. And, yeah, that's that's about it. That's about it. I'm Harrison Tarr, at by Harrison Tarr. Uh, I can't speak English. There it is. I only got a degree in journalism. Let me try that again. <laughs> I am Harrison Tarr, at by Harrison Tarr, on the Bird app. I'm not on there right now, guys. Uh, I'm probably not going to be on for another couple weeks. It's been really good for my mental health. Dylan's been relaying information. It's been bad for his mental health, but it's been fine. I've been his Twitter. He has been my Twitter. I'm going to need a break at some point. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, I am currently still on a hiatus from the Auburn Daily Show. No beef. All love to Zach Blackerby and all those guys. You guys do a rock star job. Excited to see, be, be back with you guys. But that leads me into my weekly spiel now or my daily show, spiel. Take care of yourself. Take care of your mental. Take care of your people. Uh, check up on those that, you love, that you're around that you love. And uh, I will see you guys on the Thursday show. Super excited. This was a fun one. Dylan, I will let you uh, wrap things up. I'm Dylan Lark at your boy the tank on Twitter. Catch me on my daily show every Monday with Lance Daw and Wednesday with Andrew Spaniak. Go watch the last episode where I compared Peyton Thorne to every quarterback coach by Hugh Freeze. It was it was fun. And if you want to follow us, you can catch us literally anywhere. You got us on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. But sadly, again, no MySpace. Thousand subs. We'll where is your TikTok dance, by the way? Don't worry about that. Uh-huh. Uh huh. <laughs> hey, Colin, put that <laughs> on your new on. list. Make, make hold Dylan at gunpoint until he took Doc dances. <laughs> I'm also your boss. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> also, follow us here on YouTube. You can like, comment, and subscribe. If you want your question to show up on the show, leave it down below. And it might be the clickbait, for, or the, not the clickbait, but the title for the next episode of the show. Clickbait? We don't use clickbait. <laughs> if you want to listen to us, you guys on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and of course, Amazon Music. But with all that being said, this has been the College Loop Podcast. Shout out, Colin. 